Hello and welcome to this video. This is a step-by-step -step tutorial of how to set up the minimap. We will see three steps in this video. One is how to generate a texture. If you don't have one, we'll see how you can generate one for your map. Step number two, we will create the minimap and use that texture with it. And then we'll customize the minimap and add it to the viewport and make sure that everything works just fine. Step number three, we will add something to the minimap. In this case, we will add these characters. As you can see, they have some sort of quest uh, above their head and so we will add a quest icon in the minimap so we can reach them easily in the description below you can find a link to a written tutorial if you prefer that first thing you want to do is make sure you add the minimap files to your project you can go to the epic launcher and you can click on add to project this is the dynamic umg minimap if you don't have that yet you can look for it in the market so dynamic umg minimap if we click on add to project it's going to ask you what project you want to add it to in our case it's already there so after you add it to your project you should have a folder called Centorius minimap step number one we want to generate a texture of our map of course you can use your own method of generating a texture using Photoshop or something like that in our case we will use a simple method so after adding the minimap to your project you should have a folder called Centorius minimap so we're going to click on it and inside it we have examples and minimap component. We want to go to the minimap component and then to actors and then to map capture 2D. So go ahead and add the map capture 2D in the map. Here it is. Next we want to go to the details panel and we want to make sure that it's at the center of our map. So we can change location here. X we're going to set it to 0 and Y to 0 as well. You can see the preview and the render target and the z of course we can change it manually if we want we can just put it up here for example so we want to make sure that this map capture 2d is capturing our entire map of course this depends on the size of your map make sure you are selecting the map capture 2d you want to go to details the details panel you want to look for we want to look for the property ortho width so i'm going to scroll down and look for ortho width so this is the ortho width of our map capture 2D. So the ortho width, as you can see in the tooltip, it is the desired width of our map, the area that we want to capture. So this is a very important value and we need to remember it because we will use it with the minimap. So here we have 25,000. We want to change that based on what we can see here on the render target. As you can see, it's kind of zoomed out a lot. So we want to reduce this value to capture the entire map or eliminate those dark areas so we can make we can pick something like let's try something like 10,000 of course this depends on the width of your map so 10,000 we can see the preview here it looks like we need to add a little bit so let's try 12,000 so 14,000 is the value that we're going to select it is a world unit you can get that value in another way you can go change perspective to top and for example, we're going to zoom out, zoom all the way out. And for example, as we can see here, we're capturing pretty much the entire map with a little bit at the edge here left over. So we can go from here, for example, we can hold the middle mouse button and then we can calculate from that point to this point, for example. It should be about 14,000 if we, I think it's from here. So from here to, to here, it should be about 14,000. So this is the area that we're capturing, as you can see. So you can either calculate using the uh, top view, go from here, for example, hold the middle mouse button and just calculate the distance. It's 14,000. Or you can use the, um, the ortho width here, which is more precise. So uh, we select the capture 2D. We change the ortho width until we're capturing the entire map. And 14,000 is the value or the width that we need to remember, we will use this value in our minimap. So remember 14,000, it's very important. Now that we're happy with the results, we want to create a static texture. We don't want to constantly use this map capture 2D because it's bad for performance. So what we want to do is create a static texture that we can export, edit on Photoshop, etc. So we're going to right click on this render target. We're going to select create static texture. And here is our static texture. And now we can go ahead and delete this scene capture 2D. We, we no longer need it. So we don't need that anymore. 
So we have our static texture. We're going to rename it to something like map texture, for example. And this is the static texture that we're going to use. If you want to export this texture and edit it on Photoshop or something, you can just click here and go to asset action and then export. You can export it, convert it into a PNG or something like that. You can do whatever you want with it. Step number two, we want to see the minimap when we play. So currently we see nothing. We can run uh, run around, but we need the minimap. So I'm going to go to content and then maps. Uh, this is the map that I'm working with. This is the character that we're playing with tutorial character uh, and so what we want to do is create a folder I'm going to create a folder and I'm gonna call it widgets and inside it I'm going to create a new widget blueprint so if we right click we can go to user interface here and then widget blueprint let's go ahead and rename it my minimap so let's go ahead and open that up and now we're going to add our minimap so if we go to user created we can find the minimap component or you can go here and just type minimap component so we want the minimap component that comes with the files that you added to your project so minimap component we want to drag that here somewhere uh, in this widget so we want to change the size we can pick something like 300 by 300 we can put it anywhere we want doesn't really matter uh, we could for example put it here you can customize the anchors, etc. but I'm just going to do it this way. So we added the minimap component. Now this is a very important part. We want to change the settings. So here we're going to select the texture that we're going to use with the minimap. Remember that, um, so this is the my map texture. This is what we're going to use. In map texture, we're going to select that static texture we created. So my map texture was the name. Here it is. And as you can see, we can already see the preview. Uh, we're going to ignore render target. We don't want to use a render target. We're going to jump to map link and texture. This is the ortho width. So remember the ortho width that we had, 14,000? Uh, and I said it's very important to remember that 14,000 value. Well, we're going to enter it here. So map link and texture is, is where you're going to put that 14,000. So it's very important that you enter the right value here. So we're going to change it from 1500 to 14,000. So, of course, based on the width of your map, we selected 14,000. And so this is what we're going to uh, give it here. So map link and texture is the same as ortho width. So zoom is a value from 0 to 1. We can put something like 0.6. Zoom step, this is to zoom in game. Uh, so you can change the zoom step so from 0 to 1. Uh, rotate the map, we're going to select yes is circular uh, we could disable or enable so do you want it rectangular or circular so so this depends on you and your preference for now I'm gonna keep it circular view angle texture you can use anything you want any texture uh, but we have some textures with the uh, with the files that come with the minimap so if I type my view angle I think my view angle you can use that one if you want so for the size we can pick something like so 400 is too much we can select 200 by 200 for example something like that view angle color you can change the color for the location texture this is your location which is at the center uh, and you can select the texture that you want uh, so this is my position we can use that texture I think it's my player position so there it is. We can change the color, for example, blue and the size. By default, it's 32 by 32. But you can set it something like 50 by 50 or whatever you want. So 40 by 40, for example. And minimap border, you can leave it this way or add a border. So with the minimap files, we have a few, uh, two borders. So we're going to type border. Of course, here you can use your own border if you want. So border, so round border one, and we need to change the border size. So 375 is the size. This depends, of course, on your border. And you can enable or disable border rotation. Of course, this depends on whether the map rotates or not. So that's pretty much it. Now what we want to do is add the My Minimap widget to our viewport. So we're going to save, compile. Now to add this minimap to our viewport, we need to go to the character, for example. I'm going to use the character that I'm using with this map to add the minimap. So I'm going to double click. So open that character and I'm going to go to the event begin play. So event begin play, for example, and at the begin play, we want to create that widget. 
And so we can right click and then look for create widget. So create widget. And so what widget we want to create the my minimap right here, which has the minimap component. So we want to select my minimap. Here it is. After we create the widget, we can promote it to a variable. I'm going to right click here and the return value and I'm going to select promote to variable. And this is going to be minimap. I'm going to name it minimap so we can use it later. So this is our minimap created. So I want to add this minimap to the viewport. I'm going to drag from minimap and I'm going to look for add to viewport. And there it is. So add to viewport. After we added it to the viewport, we want to make sure that the minimap start updating. And the way to do that, first, we need to get the minimap component, which is this one right here, which is which is inside the my minimap widget. So how we can do that, it's pretty easy. So you drag from minimap right here and look for get minimap component. So we want to get the minimap component again, which is just this one right here. We added here it is minimap component. And from this minimap component, we want to call minimap start update. So drag from minimap component and look for minimap start update. So here's the function minimap start update. And we're going to uh, execute that after we add this to the viewport. So here it is. And this function requires a owner pawn. This is very important. So what character or pawn in general is using this minimap? So this is a character. So we're going to give it this character. I'm going to drag from owner pawn and I'm going to give it this so or self. So you can write self or this, which is this one, just this character pretty much. So self is this character, this blueprint character. So now we can just save, compile, and then we can play and test if everything works just fine. And as you can see at the bottom, we have the minimap. And as we move, things update or the minimap updates. We can go back, for example, and change the zoom to something like 0.3 so that we can uh, zoom in a little bit. So 0.3, now we can play and it should be zoomed in a little bit. So that's fine. So if you want to change the zoom in game, we can, for example, add a uh, mouse wheel down and up. So mouse wheel uh, up, for example, and we can get this minimap component and just call zoom in, for example. So we can just minimap zoom in. So mouse wheel down, we can, for example, zoom, uh, zoom out. So same thing, we can either use this variable since it's closer or we can just get this variable from or we can just drag the minimap here and just do the same thing get minimap component so get minimap component and we can call any function we want so for example minimap minimap zoom out and now if we play we can use the uh, mouse wheel up and down to zoom in and out so as you can see we can zoom all the way out or zoom in uh, of course this is defined by the zoom steps we can for example change the zoom steps from 0 0.25 to 0 0.1 for example so 0.1 should be more precise so we can zoom a little bit step by step so as you can see now we can uh, you can reduce uh, reduce it from 0.1 to like 0 0.05 or something like that now we're going to go to step 3 which is add something to the minimap in this case we want to add these characters and we need a texture that we're going to show on the minimap. So what we're going to show on the minimap for these characters. This is what we're going to use to uh, show these characters on the map. Uh, these ones right here. So uh, we're going to back to the tutorial character or the, just the character in general. And what I want to do here is I'm going to create an event, a custom event that I'm going to call in the event begin play to add these characters. So I'm going to right click. And I'm going to look for custom event or add custom event. I'm going to call it add uh, characters. And so we want to add these characters. So we want to know what are these characters of what class are they? So if we select this character, we can see here that it's an AI quest giver. Uh, it's just the name of the character. Um, so I'm going to go back to here so we can add anything pretty much. So I'm going to get the minimap. And from this minimap variable, I'm going to get the minimap component. So get minimap component. From minimap component, we want to call add actors. So look for add actors. We're going to select the one with S. So we want to add multiple actors. But first, we need the actors. So how can we get these actors? We can, for example, use the get all actors of class. So we're going to right click get all actors of class. We're going to link it here 
and what actors we want to get the quest giver characters so this depending on what uh what characters or what actors in general you want to add so i want to add these characters and so i'm going to link this here and i'm going to give it these characters so out ca actors i'm going to uh, link it here to the point of interest actors you can follow the actor rotation if the character moves or rotates or etc but for this case i'm not going to do that for the texture we're going to use this this quest right here this uh, texture so the quest one is the image or texture that i'm going to use so quest one there you go for the size i can go with something like 32 by 32 and we'll see the result later we can change it later uh, for the color i'm going to drag and do make color and for the color i can select something like green something like this show height indicator it is a feature that allows you to know if something is above or below you uh, by showing an arrow on the object in the minimaps this is very helpful if you want to know if something is like upstairs or downstairs or something like that so this is all we need so first we get the characters and then we call the minimap component we call the function add actors and we want to give it the actors and of course change the settings now we're going to call this event so we're going to go to the event begin play now after we add the minimap and all we want to do a sequence for example so sequence first we're going to create the widget add it and call minimap start update i'm going to drag from here and call add characters which is the name of this event that we just created here so this should work just fine and let's just compile now if we play we can uh zoom all the way out and as you can see these as you can see we can see the uh the quests on the map on the minimap and you can go to them uh, we can change the color for example from green to blue and just to see it better and now we can play and just zoom out and you can see the quests on the minimap now of course if we zoom all the way uh, all the way in we can't see them because they're we need to get closer and so if you want these quests to always appear on the minimap you need to make them persistent and so instead of add actors we need add persistent actors so we can for example do add persistent actors so add persistent actors will allow these uh whatever we add to the minimap to be always on the minimap so persistent pretty much so we're going to uh, unlink this one and we're going to use this one instead so what actors we want so the same thing we don't want to follow the rotation we want the same thing quest one and for the size i'm going to keep it 32 by 32 for the color we can select whatever we want so make slate color and we can select uh orange for example out of minimap texture this is when it's off minimap we want to change it to something else so and here we can use this one or you can use pretty much anything you want so i'm going to use either this one or this one so let's just go ahead and use this one so, so name is out of map indicator 2 so that's what we're going to use as out of minimap or off minimap so out of minimap texture we're going to use that out of minimap indicator so out of minimap indicator 2 and that's what we're going to use now let's go ahead and play and i'm going to zoom in a little bit and as you can see because they're persistent they always appear on the minimap so as you can see we can see that that guy is right there and even if he's off the minimap for example if we zoom all the way out we can see uh the icon right there and but if we zoom in for uh, zoom in for example and because they're off the minimap we can still see them uh thanks to the uh because they're persistent so we change the texture to the indicator like uh off out of minimap indicator uh to indicate where they are so as uh, for example this guy right here we can see that the pointer points to this direction so we can reach him easily so here it is so again in the description below you can find the link to a post which has more information on how to use certain functions to for example change the texture and game uh, etc so you can use that link to learn more about this minimap and how you can use it so i hope this video was useful if you have any questions comment below and until then see you later take care